What's up, Space Pirates? This is your captain, the chronically charismatic Dr. Disaster, and we are going to discuss a writer in Warhammer who admitted to injecting ridiculous propaganda into Warhammer. But before we dig into that, I wanted to start this video off by painting a picture of a dark fantasy world. And when you spot the part that doesn't belong, I want you to ask yourself, what the hell were these people thinking? Now, imagine a grim dark reality, if you will, where horrible hordes of monsters go to war, armed with gruesome, terrifying weapons of the future. Imagine armies made up of cold, mirthless people marching into war in the cold recesses of space. Some of them are human, but they hardly resemble humans as we know them today. They feel no sympathy, no empathy. The only thing they care about is glory and victory. The troops in these bloody battles blow each other to smithereens, carve each other up, and in most cases, it is considered an honor to callously send these warriors to their certain grisly doom. But don't you dare misgender a single one of them, because, you know, you don't want to be a monster. It is man! I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also, don't forget to follow me over on Twitter, where my handle is Dr. Disaster One. But in any event, let's read this article from the website That Park Place to see what is happening with all this modern gender political crap that has no place in Warhammer. And before anyone gets their panties in a bunch, that is literally not me saying that if you are into that stuff that you can't play the game and get into the hobby. Oh, you give a f***ing aspirin and that ache, pal! Nobody is saying that you cannot play if you're into this woke stuff, but what I am saying is that it is wildly out of place in a story about merciless war and death for anyone to care about the characters Fifi's. I just want to point out that most of the shit that people concern themselves with these days, most of the crap they believe are luxury beliefs, and they do not belong in a Warhammer setting. But let's read so you can see what I'm talking about. The article says, Warhammer 40k novelist James Swallow confirmed he included gender transition propaganda into his Sisters of Battle story, Iron and Bone. An excerpt from the story states, You know my name? Had she mentioned it to Telfer after they disembarked from the warp ship that had brought her to this system? Verity searched her memory, but she couldn't recall. You told me, said the pilot. Remember? He grinned. A good name, good name. I once knew someone who took it when they transitioned. It's in the Book of Heroes, so it is. I don't care! Nothing takes a reader out of a story faster than reminding them that the real world exists. Breaking the fourth wall only works in very niche stories. Deadpool, as an example, does a great job with this, but dismantling the illusion of being in the story by modernizing a tale about a people who would not share our modern sensibilities is downright moronic. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard, you imbecile! And to be clear, the author actually clarified that he was, indeed, talking about a gender transition in that passage. The article says, On December 10th, 2023, Swallow confirmed this was a reference to gender transition. He wrote, Hi, the referenced scene is from my Sisters of Battle story, Iron and Bone, not my novel, Faith and Fire, 
Telfer, the pilot, is telling Verity, a sister hospitaller and war hero, about his friend, a regular Imperial citizen, who took the same name after they underwent gender transition. Swallow is not the only one to include woke propaganda in Warhammer 40k novels and stories. Chainsword 40k previously reported that author Mike Brooks allegedly included non-binary characters in Brutal Kunin, a transgender Drakari in Da Big Daka, characters that believe in the god Empress instead of the Emperor in Wanted Dead, gender identity ideology and pronouns in Lion, Sons of the Forest, and woke pronouns in Rites of Passage. Brooks also noted that orc faction the Freebooters support pride, trans rights, and Black Lives Matter in August of 2020. He's full of shit! That's just how I like my orcs in any story. They can carve out a person's heart and eat it. They can decapitate people left and right in merciless rage. But do not dare let them oppose BLM or to misgender their enemy. These aren't monsters, after all. But as the article continues, all of this has been dug up in the wake of Games Workshop retconning the Adeptus Custodes by including a female custodian in their latest Codex Adeptus Custodes. Not only did Games Workshop retcon the Adeptus Custodes, but they gaslit hobbyists by claiming there had always been female custodies. And yeah, that was the match that lit the powder keg in the Warhammer community and caused all the controversy that we're suffering from these days. But this woke infiltration has been going on for some time. These activists have been hollowing out the hobby for a while. But take heart. Look at how the fans of Helldivers 2 recently handled the controversy surrounding their game. The players were in such an outrage over what Sony was doing to their game, and they boycotted it. They asked for refunds and made all kinds of noise online, and they finally got Sony to cave. I think Warhammer fans can do the same in this space. So boycott Warhammer, stop buying their shit if you don't like this kind of propaganda being shoved into the lore of this thing that you love. But I'm going to leave it there. What do you think about what is going on with the lore of this hobby? Is it even worth trying to save? And also, I have been picking up old Warhammer lore books, and I could use your help with some suggestions on what to read next. So let me know if you have any suggestions. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below, and we will talk there. Thanks for watching me, hearties. If you haven't already, your captain is inviting you to subscribe to the channel and become a part of the crew. Life as a space pirate may not be glamorous, but there's always plenty of booty.